I don't know that everyone has the potential to be health literate, as, as the term is generally used, in a modern era, when there's so many new information platforms out there, there's so much new research coming out. Welcome to the Anti-Cancer Toolkit series, where we discuss everything from healthy habit building to nutritional sciences to health misinformation, all to equip you with knowledge on cancer prevention through nutrition. That brings me to our guest today. My name is Blair Bigham. I'm an ICU doctor and a scientist at the University of Toronto. Could you talk a bit about why, right now in this moment, we're so susceptible to health misinformation? It used to be that there were only a few sources and the quality of information coming from them was pretty reliable. Now, we have sources left, right and center, and it can be hard to sort out which ones of those have good information, accurate information, and which ones can maybe lead us astray. What makes or maybe doesn't make cancer-related communication and misinformation unique? One of the most important things about information transfer is that people trust it. And one of the qualities of trust is consistency. If people hear the same message coming over and over, it makes it more reliable, more consistent, more trustworthy. But there's a second element, and it, it might even be a more important element, and that's that cancer is really scary. Social media techniques these days are very, very emotional. They're very good at connecting with us. People look right into the camera like I am now and they build trust. They usually use anecdote, personal stories to talk about their own experience. And they then try to translate that experience as being a certainty for other people. Health literacy plays a big role in misinformation, um, but there's these kind of competing factors in that we, again, as members of the general public, are trying to be vigilant about the information that we're consuming. But at the same time, we don't necessarily have the expertise to fully understand everything that's going on. I think the term health literacy is a faulty term. First of all, it implies that if you're not health literate, you're health illiterate, and nobody wants to feel illiterate. Also, it puts an awful lot of a burden on both healthcare professionals and, and lay people, members of the public, to try to become literate in a topic that can take years and years to master. When you're consuming social media, just make sure that your analytic brain is still activated, that you're still saying, well, wait a minute, does this match my circumstance? And if you can do that, then you're definitely ahead of the curve. 